What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be checking out Maya, which is a game that was one of the first early access games that was ever released to Steam. Bit of a bit of a controversy around this one just because it's been in development for so long, but uh, I wanted to check it out. It's been five years since the game came out and I wanted to see where it was at. Five years of early access and surely there must be something done, right? So without further ado, let's check out some Maya and see if it's something that's worth your hard-earned ducats when you're out working in the slave pits or whatever it is you do for a living out in, like, I don't know, the gruel farm or whatever it is. Right, we're going to go in exploration mode and we'll just start this thing off. We've got to pick ourselves some colonists. So we've got a geothermal power system, psychology, and maintenance. That sounds pretty good to me. Astrobiology might be a smart thing to have when we're on an alternate planet. Lukewarm tea, Moroccan shabby dancing. No, I think you're out. I don't think you're going to be able to make it. Astrobiology we already have. Emergency medicine, meteoritics, and paleobotany. Okay, that sounds about right. Rifle marksmanship and psychology. So yeah, that sounds about right to me. We've got somebody over here who can do maintenance. We've got somebody that can do science. We've got somebody that can do medicine. And we've got somebody that can do defense. Sounds like a pretty decent spread of people to me. So welcome to our little colony in Maya. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we start out with just a couple of little rooms right here. We start out with the main living area. We start out with the storage area and a number of these little building materials right here. We probably don't want to play around with these too much. You want to be careful with building materials. You want to be careful with them because you only get a certain amount of them before you're out. We also have ration packs. We've got water. If we take a look at our base manifest up here, it'll tell us how much. So we've got three days worth of food. We've got some chickens, we've got some ration packs, so that's pretty cool. Other things that live inside of our base, we have a cat over here whose apathy levels are apparently at critical. Valuables knocked off surfaces zero, and one present has been left. I think we have a dog too, although I don't know where the dog is. I think there's a dog around here somewhere. Yeah, there it is right there. Incoming transmission. Woof. I'm sure it's incredibly important that neighbor dog needs to find out. So the first big thing that we really want to do is we want to click on the rooms tab and we want to put in a workshop. That's basically like the first thing you always want to do so that you can do basic work. Like if you don't have that, it becomes a problem. We can go to build objects and we'll put in a door right there. And then I would suggest that it's probably a good idea to put a door up there too so that we continue our mining operations in varying directions. Uh, other things that I would do is I would probably queue up some mining jobs, although for right now I think that can wait. Uh, we do want to see to our power grid too because just about everything's going to cost us power. So outside in the snow, oh look, my cat is here. His apathy does feel critical. He's on my lap right now. I can feel the apathy oozing off of him. What else can we build up here? Solar arrays? Okay. Uh, we can do we can do a permanent solar array, or we can do a portable solar array. I don't know what the difference is, aside from one can apparently be moved around. We've got a solar still, turns sunlight and humidity into drinking water. That's actually a real device. Not that hard to make. All you need is a ditch, like greenery, and a tarp, and you can pretty much make that. You need equitable heat, though. You don't have a, if you don't have heat, it's not going to work. It's not going to be an option. We can also have a flag, which turns kinetic energy into patriotism, apparently. Our freedom units will increase. Uh, we've got a weather station over here, we've got a seismic monitoring station, glow sticks, turrets, probably good things that I could put out there. Uh, now that we're inside of here though, in our workspace, we want to have a workshop table. So let's go ahead and put in a workshop table. The alternate thing that we probably want to do is if you click on the robot button down here, you can also give him mining assignments, which are probably a smart thing to do. So let's maybe give him a couple of mining assignments. I'm not against it. There we go. We'll go ahead and... Make like an extra building space over here. Just so it's all ready to go. Hopefully finishes that off pretty quickly. You can actually take control of the robot too, if you really want to. If you go like this, you can be like, I am a robot, look at me. I've got digital LEDs, I am a robot. I'll take him over to his destination right here and then we'll drop that out and let him get back to work. Human interference is messing with his efficiency. So what we want next as we definitely want to build some kind of power generation. And so I'm going to start with a wind turbine, I guess. We'll put in a wind turbine out there. Because I don't know if you notice, but uh, we don't have any electricity right now. We have an ecosystem. So local wildlife appears to be migrating closer to the base. May increase risk to surface operations or lead to damage to equipment. Creatures are attracted to light, scent, sound, and anything else close to their territory. An abundance of life may evoke the interest of herbivores. And an abundance of herbivores may attract... Carnivores, conversely, a lack of greenery may lead to plant eaters taking interest in our constructions and cabling. Little is known of their physiology and psychology, and they cannot be predicted. Exercise extreme caution. 
Okay. And then we've also got an email over here. Welcome to the secure messaging system. We have a 256 MB mail inbox. Okay. That's fine. We don't need to know that for right now. Uh, other things that we probably want to look into are the abilities. I usually get back to my base. I just click my robot. That's the easiest way to find your way back to your base is just click a robot real fast. And so what we should see is that these little guys right here should go through. Uh, burk, burk, burk. Burk, burk. An incoming transmission from our chicken. Apparently they've mastered the art of uh, digital transmissions. That looks like it's facing the wrong direction, but hey, it gives us like 3.5... It gives us 3.5 kilowatts, which is okay because most objects in this game are going to take like 350 watts. And so that'll be alright. As far as objects go in here, my suggestion would be that we make a atmosphere generator so that it doesn't get too cold in this room. If it ends up getting too cold, it can cause problems for your workers. So we'll put one in right there, although we do want to be very careful about our workshop supplies. We don't have a lot of them. And so making sure that we have supplies is a pretty good idea. I still, as of right now, haven't figured out how we generate more workshop supplies. But I think in a lot of ways it's probably due to the fact that... Uh, let's click that off the mouse real fast. Over here we've got a fossiliferous rock sample. We've got some minerals, so it's mostly silicon and aluminum with a little bit of iron and everything else inside of there. I'm surprised that there's actually so much iron and so little magnesium, although the variance is only 3%. Uh, Meteorix Paleobotany. Cooper wants to ask us... Can we read his short story? Sure, why not? The infinite cosmos waited. It's a stable time loop. It turns out it was Earth in the future. Okay. He's writing books and sending them to us because he has no one else to send it to. Is that done? Good. The wind turbine's all finished off. Uh, other things you might be able to focus on is you can make a battery in here to store the power just in case anything ever happens to the wind. But that's something you'll probably want to think about a little bit later. What other objects can I make in here? So I can make a microwave smelter. Turns electricity and minerals into building materials. That sounds pretty rad to me, actually. So let's go ahead and we'll put that in like... I don't know, like right there sounds good. I don't have a problem with that. Hopefully that'll allow us to get some building materials so we can keep expanding this place out. Progress report. Without beds to get some proper rest, productivity is going to plummet. Tired mistakes down here could kill us. Room-wise, there are some points I'd like to raise. I'm hoping we'll get orders for a hydroponic room soon. I understand that a microwave smelter would be a wise choice for our next construction project. It's not efficient to have us humans fixing everything. We're all fleshy and bruise easily. So he wants us to build a construction robot as well. So those are the other things you got to watch out for in here, is that your colonists will do their best to sort of guide you and let you know what's going on right now. Really, 83 kilometers per hour right now. That's a pretty stiff wind. I mean, then again, I got to do the conversion from kilometers to miles per hour, but that still seems pretty stiff to me. Even if you divide it by a factor of like three, that's still a pretty stiff wind. It's not as bad as where I live. Where I live, it's windy just around the clock. I'm right next to the ocean. So like, basically I live next to a swamp delta that's next to the ocean, so it feeds off the ocean. And yeah, it gets windy AF out here. It gets windy AF. Uh, so the atmosphere generator is doing its thing. Atmospheric status is looking pretty good over here. Hopefully the smelter gets done pretty soon. I don't know if they do that all by their lonesome and they just do that. But uh, I hope that they do. I don't know if we need some kind of storage bin or something in here for like mineral storage. Let's have a look. Is there mineral storage? Doesn't look like there's mineral storage. So my assumption is that somebody's going to go over here and grab some of these stones and things that are laying around. Yeah, there it is right there. He just went up to that stone pile, and he's grabbing little chunks of it. And I, my guess is that he's going to come back over here, and he's going to craft that into building materials. Because as far as I can tell, we are out right now. And so we're not really going to be able to get a whole lot done until we have some more. Uh, the next thing that I would probably do is put in a living area right here. Just a little space where people can go to get some R&R. &R. Just a nice little sleep area. Then what we can do is we can flip this around. Oh, really? The storage area is too cold. Somebody leave the airlock open or something? Why is it too cold in there? I don't have any building materials, so there's not going to be a whole lot I can do about that for right now, unfortunately. Uh, it's going to be one of those things that i got to deal with a little bit later. This place is going to need a door, so let's go ahead and make that happen, too, so that people can get around and do their thing. It looks like we have a meteorite warning, maybe? Got bolides coming in. Yeah, infrared telescopes have indicated that a super bolide event is imminent. All that bolide means is a geological term for a highly, <laughs> a highly energetic projectile that we did not manufacture. That's basically all that bolide means. Bolide means that it is a, a very fast projectile that we have no control over and we had no hand in manufacturing. 
Is that when a meteorite large enough to cause significant air bursts has entered the gravitational well of the planet may cause a kiloton, multi megaton event. Good lord. Orbital laser ablation has not managed to reduce the threat due to high albedo need or high albedo speed and bastardicity of the target. The energy released is likely to create blinding light and an intense blast from atmospheric impact. Minimize surface operations. Okay, I'll keep that in mind then. I will keep that in mind then. Go ahead and give me another door right there too. So that's a fossil right there. It looks like... So how long does it take him to manufacture a building material out of some of the little things we got going on? Oh shit, that's not good. Yeah, that shakiness got me all kinds of nervous. I don't like that. Earthquakes when you're underground are kind of the most terrifying thing in existence. I don't like that at all. They do work kind of slowly. There is no way to speed up the game as far as I know. And so, you know, you do what you gotta do out here. You do what you gotta do. So how do I check the individual temperatures of rooms? I'm a little bit curious about this. So we've got like some kind of megacephalalgia. Okay, so mega head something. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is right there either, but I assume that it's going to be important. Alright, well I'm perfectly aware of the fact that you have problems with the actual temperature at the moment, but until I have building materials, there's not much I can do there. My hope was that somebody over here was going to be able to do something. So we should set an order for the imps to clear the entrance to the base of all foliage. It's going to attract hungry creatures towards the base. Increase of surface activity might bring about a small risk of attracting attention, but I've calculated it to be minimal. Shall I make the order? Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Plants set for destruction. 13. The plants must die. We will annihilate them. They will be taken from their comfortable planty place of dwelling and they will be eliminated, I suppose. So, like, do you ever get done with building materials over here? Or, like, do you just sit there forever working on it? Oh, well, there you go. We can see the progress when we mouse over it. So it looks like they're trying to get something done over here. It actually doesn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. It's actually the transit that seems to be the biggest issue, is them going and picking up bullshit from other locations. And so I don't know if our building materials got instantly used on doors or something that we were setting together. So, yeah, there's our building material right there, and it's waiting for collection. Cool. Uh, next thing that I would suggest is the possibility that we start thinking about a hydroponics area. I can't really do a whole lot over here due to the fact that my robot appears to be maybe trapped by a cave-in or something. I don't know. We've got lots of materials laying around. He doesn't seem inherently too interested in going and getting all those plants that they keep telling me to go get. So if I click on the... It looked like we had for a second. It was telling me about the room on the right. How do I learn about what's going on with the room? Okay, put in an atmosphere generator over there then. We'll use that one building material in the atmosphere generator just to keep it moving. And they should continue to just ham out this stuff over here, I think. And so, yeah, they should continue to make building materials. If I can make beds or something over here, that'd be great. So let's put in a bed right there. I don't want to overdo it on the beds but I do want to do it nonetheless. And so there's some beds right there. That should be enough for everybody. If we wanted a new colonist, we can click on this button right here. And lo and behold, a new guy will land. Right there. A new guy will land, and now we have a new colonist. In case you were a little bit worried about that. He should make his way over to the base. Our robot is hauling a giant dinosaur fossil with his dong, apparently. We're dong loading. That's how we do out here. That's how we do in the nerd castle. Nothing but the best from our dong loads. There's no minerals in the smelting area. I do wish there was an easier way to transfer that stuff over to there, but I don't know. Hopefully the atmosphere generator will get done pretty soon. The extra worker is definitely something that I think is going to be helpful too. And so, yeah, actually put the minerals inside of there. Allow them to have as much minerals inside of there as they want to have. And then have building materials. We can have like 10 building materials in here. So that atmosphere generator should start going. It's using cleansing through monofilament lattices. Uh, that should help us with the temperature inside this room, which they actually appear to be quite salty about. They are not super stoked. So this guy over here, who are you, new guy? Who are you? So W. Smith. Do I have, like, a personnel listing over here that I can go through? Oh, yeah, I do. So W. Smith. But it doesn't give me, like, a readout or whatever. I was kind of interested in, like, who he is and what he does. What's he doing at the workshop table right there? What's he making? Maybe he's crafting a bed or something. 
I don't know, either way we got our atmospheric generator up and running. And that was basically all that I was worried about for the moment. I'm hoping that... Low temperature warning in base? Shouldn't be. Do I need an atmospheric generator in every single room? It looks like it might be possible because their breath is fogging inside these rooms. And so I may need to put one inside each room. That kind of sucks because we have lots of outputs that need to get done. And so unfortunately, I can't really afford to do more atmospheric generators right now. Our grid supply is still solid, so we don't have that much to worry about. I'll put one in over there just so people can be happy. And then over here, I'll put in an atmospheric generator as well. What does a food preparation system do? Turns fruit, vegetables, and meat into cooked food. That's probably something we should look into. I'll put one of those right there. And I'm actually going to let them just kind of merrily go along their way doing their thing. Uh, hydroponics workshop is up next. And so let's go ahead and get that going. I dislike the way that it deletes your minerals on the ground if you place a building. That's a little upsetting. I don't like that very much. I wish that it didn't work like that, but hey. I guess if dreams and fishes were, I'm sorry, dreams and wishes were loaves and fishes and all that, as my old man used to say, every day would be Sunday. If dreams and wishes were loaves and fishes, every day would be Sunday. That's one of those, like, cynical things you can only come up with if you're, like, an old guy. Otherwise, you're like, nah. I'm happy enough for this to work, so we got more output right there. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm glad to see it. We'll make more workshops as necessary. Uh, we have a colonist request over here. Airlocks are looking unsightly, all gunked up and dirty. This is what happens when people don't take off their shoes. Quick blast of high-pressure air should clean it up. We'll lose a little atmosphere, but we got plenty, right? Uh, no, don't do that. If it ends up gunking up or whatever, I'm not that worried about it. We'll fix it. We have a mechanic. What is this? I thought building things would just be slow and tedious, but actually it's riveting. Uh, so he's actually got a construction skill now that he's learned. That's pretty sweet. This game does have some control issues. Uh, along my critiques of this game is that there's been some interesting stuff where, like, right-click does something different depending on almost everything that's on your clicker. Like, with rooms, it deletes it. With objects, it drops it off your clicker. With mining, it doesn't do anything. Like, they need to unify the controls in this game would be the first big observation that I would make on a critique level where right-clicking needs to drop things off your control or it needs to delete things on every single button. Like, everything needs to have a unified control scheme so that the player doesn't end up being confused. Aside from that, the ability to, so for example, so that guy got a building operation, that guy got building too. Okay, I'm okay with that. Sounds good to me. Uh, we got some more messages here to go through, so let me delete these off here. We'll get there eventually. I've got a splitting headache. I should get something for it. Uh, we need building materials to construct and maintain equipment. We must process and smelt the ore into more minerals, which is what they're doing right there. And so we're actually starting to get some more ore stored up. And my hope is that by the time we get a lot of this done, we should end up with a lot of excess materials to make things happen. This is our hydroponics over here. So we've got a hydroponic fruit tree. We can do a hydroponic kale planter, turns light and carbon dioxide. So how do I get light into here? I mean, I assume we're going to need an atmosphere generator, maybe. But maybe this room already has the blue lights in it? I don't know. I don't know if it automatically is already set up with the things that it needs. But let's put in some fruit trees, I guess. And then we'll make some potato. We'll make some dirter planters over here, because I love dirters. Dirters are delicious. And so there we go. we got our dirters. And then we can go with some kale, maybe, some carrots or some broccoli. Broccoli's good for you. We'll put some broccoli, like, over here. And maybe that'll get us strapped up with enough food to last a little while. So I don't know if the lighting needs to be installed over here, but I don't see anything other than a glow stick, so... Eh. Seems alright to me. So this is low temperature warning in base. That's probably due to this over here. We need an atmospheric generator on this side. Uh, let's put in an atmospheric generator right there, and I'm sure we're going to need more power. So our grid supply is being used up pretty rapidly. In fact, that's probably going to take us up and over the top. And so my next suggestion would be uh, the construction of another wind turbine, I guess. Seems all right to me, throwing another wind turbine. Yep, why worry about it? And so they have plenty of tasks to keep themselves occupied with for right now. Uh, we are trying to spit out building materials about as fast as possible. This individual has gotten another construction badge, so that's good. 
We are going to have power issues pretty soon, though. So I'm hoping they decide to put that up before too long, or else we'll all freeze to death. And as far as I understand it, freezing to death is probably a bad plan. Our cat status... Oh, look, he's left four presents now, but he hasn't knocked any objects off of any shelves as of recently. So, you know, why is this guy walking around with a gun? Is there a reason you're just walking around the base with a firearm, you psycho? Ooh, we got an earthquake. Is everything okay? Temperature is 10.7 degrees. Oh, you click on the wall right there. And so the temperature in here is 13 degrees Celsius, which is like 50-ish. It's up there. I mean, normally what I do is I just double it and add 32. That tends to be the easiest way to just do quick and dirty temperature conversions. You did. It works less and less, though, the higher the temperature, so don't do it. But with like a temperature like 15C, you can just double it and add 32, and you'll probably be pretty close. 62 is chilly for inside the house. It's a little chilly for inside the house, but, you know, no complaints from me. That room's looking good. This room definitely needs an atmospheric generator. Did somebody just die? I thought I heard somebody go, Bleh! and like make a noise. So we have one day of food remaining. We're probably going to have to eat some chickens or something. How do I kill a chicken? Chicken, I need you to fall on your sword for me. Die, chicken, die. This guy is cheering, apparently. I don't know what he's cheering for, but hey. As a Twitch streamer, I'm always in support of all things cheering. That guy's walking around with a rifle as well. Why are you guys so paranoid? Everybody in this base walking around with firearms. Like, something bad's gonna happen any second. Like, we're not behind, like, an airlock. Like, we're behind an airlock, man. It's gotta take a hell of an animal to get through an airlock. That's all I'm saying. I've made a diagnosis, a doctor. I must keep the nature of the host of the illness. I can treat it quickly now. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Make him better. I've consulted with the colonists, and they should heal up fine. The human body's a disgusting bag of fat and bone. I should have studied robotics. Man, bro. As a doctor, you should be a little bit more positive about this kind of stuff. That's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, look, our dirter fields are in. So that's good. It's actually generating food for right now. I don't know when they're going to harvest that, but it looks like the lights come stat. Uh, this game is called Maya. If you guys have enjoyed it so far, let me know and I'll do a follow-up episode. Uh, leave lots of likes and comments if you want that to be the case. Uh, taking a second to leave a like on these videos actually helps out tremendously on the back end of YouTube and helps my channel get more exposure and stuff like that. Aside from that, if you wanted to see more of the content that I produce, feel free to swing by the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash splattercatgaming. And if you wanted to support me, you could check out the Patreon, which helps me continue digging up amazing indie games for you guys to play. All right, I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. This is Maya. Goodbye, everyone.